Hey guys, Waifugate here, and today I'll be going over my Magic Find Wander I've been using in Bestiary. This build is relatively cheap to get off the ground at this point in the league, and it's great for maps like Underground Sea or for speedrunning burial chambers. I made some adjustments both in Ascendancy and Gear, and feel like I've found a good balance between item quantity, survivability, and clear speed. The build uses Kinetic Blast both as a bossing skill and a clear skill. I have Barrage set up with Knockback and GMP to set tough red beasts and bosses up against a wall so that KB can shotgun with its explosions. It's not like the old Frost Wall setup, but it works well enough and it allows us to use more Magic Find gear instead of Thunder Fist or sacrificing movement speed in our helmet slot or another pseudo 6 link. All right, so let's jump right into the gear. We, here we've got 62% item quantity, and with our current setup, if we hit all of our flasks, we've got 251% move speed. So we, we, we go pretty fast here. Um, so let's just jump right into it. So for the helmet, we've got Devoto's Devotion. The lab enchant is not required, but it's nice quality of life. I'd shoot for the 75% chance for an additional explosion or 40% KB. The evasion rating is nice if you can get like a 180 plus roll, but don't stress about it. Chaos Res is also a little nice if you can get a higher roll. So the shield, we've got Ash's Mirror. Your other choice is Lycosidae. Lycosidae is more expensive, and I think that Ash's Mirror is the better option here. Uh, main reason is that we're stacking damage from Pescator's Vigil, with attacks of this weapon have X amount of increased elemental damage. The rules on this go from like, I think it's 100 to 115. Um, but that being said, the flat damage from the shield is insane for the build. It just scales our damage. And if you're leveling up your gems, like, you know, added lightning, added cold, that type of stuff, this, this helps you uh, carry your damage for a little while. Super nice. Uh, Lycosidae feels pretty good because you never miss, but um, I didn't really miss the... Uh, you know, RT effect there. Well, not really RT because you can still crit, but you know what I mean. Uh, Ash's Mirror definitely here. Uh, you're looking for life here, and that's pretty much it. The Lightning Res rolls nice, but if you can get a decent roll for like, you know, 30 Chaos, I'd pick it up. This shield generally for trash rolls goes for like 23 Chaos, so definitely cheaper than Lycosidae, and I'd go with that. So Gold Worm, if you are in Hardcore, uh, it's a little harder to run stuff like Gold Worm and Sedima's Touch because it doesn't add any flat to life. But I'd be running lower tier maps if I was in Hardcore. So, you know, I, I like Gold Worm here a lot, both for Soft and Hardcore. It gives us 20% item quantity, which is pretty hard to get anywhere else. In fact, it's impossible to get anywhere else. Even with a Pariah Ring uh, White Socket, you get 15% for a slot. Um, and these are just these are just really good. The enchant here doesn't matter much. You can go uh, added fire damage to attacks if you've killed recently. Uh, anything that helps. If you see you know an enchant while you're searching for your boots, you're like, oh, that could be nice. You know, you can pick it up, but don't don't overpay for it. Mostly just make sure that you're getting 20% item quantity here, and that's pretty much it for that slot. So headhunter definitely not for the budget version of the build. Um, I did a few test runs with Bisco's Leash, and the Rampage is still pretty good. Most of the time when you see Headhunter in a build, you can replace it with Bisco's Leash. It won't go as fast, but it will go fast enough to clear for sure. That and Bisco's Leash actually gives you a little bit of cold res up to 40%, so that can help you cap your reses. Uh, as you can see, most of our gear um, doesn't really have a lot in terms of resistances, like Devota's Devotion, no res. This gives us res, this doesn't, so no res, a little bit of res, a little bit of res. But you know, we're not really getting like two or three reses in, on any of our gear, really. It's mostly just like single slot reses that are um, subpar. So, yep, Bisco's, so Bisco's Leash here for budget, and or you could use a Stygian Vice. Um, you could even use Darkness Enthroned if you wanted to. Um, and that'll give you some more flat damage if you can get some budget wand uh, jewels. Those are a little pricey though, so uh, you might struggle you know, finding enough cash to get enough jewels to fill in your tree, but there are always budget options. You can always cap your reses or something with jewels. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. You can just adjust it. It's a pretty flexible build. Here we've got Sedima's Touch. These give us 16% item quantity. A perfect roll goes for maybe 7 to 10 Chaos Uncorrupted. Um, it's not too, too hard to pick a pair of these up. Um, hardcore it might be a little hard because you're not getting any flat life. Same thing with the Gold Worm. You know, they're pretty similar. Um, I'd still try to find a way to fit them in though. Um, yep, Sedima's Touch here. If you want, you can run rare with uh, life and reses, but... I just, I highly recommend Sedimas. Um, we've already kind of gone over the wand a little bit, but here you're looking for percent increased attack speed, 18% is the max roll, and critical strike chance, which goes up to 30%. The other two rolls aren't that important. They're good. Don't get me wrong, they're good. But you'll notice the most damage scaling from just that attack speed and the crit chance. And then shoot for like, you know, 107, 110 or something with the... Uh, increased elemental damage if you have the budget you can pick up a perfect one for like an exalt or something but like you know that's up to you uh, i've been using this one for a while now and it's it's been treating me real well uh, for the ring slots we're using thief's torment which take up uh, it takes up both of the slots uh, this gives us 16 percent item quantity um, so the math breakdown behind this is if you get a decently rolled ventor is two of them right and they're both 8% rolls, okay? And you want like a little bit of life, like 20 life, you don't want negative life or whatever. Um, you've got uh, uh, negative reses or like, you don't want negative reses, right? So if you get like 10% all res on this ring, on this Ventors, and it's got 10% quantity or 8% quantity, the, the rings are gonna be a little pricey. They're gonna be like an Exalt or something or 45 Chaos. You pick up one ring here. You pick up Thief's Torment for 12C, for 16C for a decent roll, or 20C even, 20C, oh no. Um, okay, so you pick up a decent roll for 20C like this. Uh, it's, it beats out Ventors just for, for prices. You know what I mean? Um, and in Hardcore, you do want that life, but this also gives you some sense of survivability because of the pseudo Vol Pact effect here. So you've got 49 life gain for each enemy hit by your attacks. That pops you right back up, especially since we only rock like 3.5, 4.5k life tops. It's super nice. Amazing. So for our, for our budget, it's insane. So the amulet slot. So this, um, there's been a lot of like debate on whether Abisko's uh, Bisco's Collar is better than a Shaper Amulet or a Talisman, the Spine Fuse Talisman. Um, and for now, I think with the way that I'm increasing the pack size of my maps and whatnot, uh, like you look at Sextants and you see what you actually roll up on them. 30% pack size for magic monsters. Um, adds poisonous monsters to your map. All of that stuff is giving you magic monsters, not normal monsters. The, the days are sort of over where we use Breach to get white monsters into our maps and to uh, increase the effectiveness of Biscos. It's not just a, an easy choice now. It's, it's more about preference and what you want to get on your amulet slot. Like there's a lot of flexibility here. Now, um, Grim, a uh, fellow uh, PoE streamer, has like, the, like he brought up how you can farm the Spine Fused Talismans. Um, it's something about capturing a beast in the uh, wolf pack den map and such. So if you're interested in a budget option for like a 10% quantity amulet, uh, you should check out that video. I'll probably link it in the description below just for reference. Um, but he goes over in detail how to get that. And it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, if not, if you have the budget, you can get a shaper amulet. Um, the 6% quant rolls are generally a little cheaper than the 10s, but... The 10% are definitely uh, what you want. So whether that's grinding out for the talismans or shelling out some cash for the shaper amulets, uh, you know, that's your choice. But there are options. If anything, here, if you're struggling for a budget, just use a rare with life and reses because you're going to struggle with that a little bit anyway with the build starting off. Um, this amulet I paid like 7x for. The base itself at the time was around like 5 or 6 so I got a really good deal, but just, just do what you can with your budget here. And for our chess piece, we are running Queen of the Forest. 
So this is pretty vital to the build. Um, here you're looking for like a 230-ish evasion roll. Um, it goes up to 70 life, so like anything like 60, 65 is fine. And then you want to get okay reses because you're not going to get it anywhere else in your gear, really. Um, so yeah, Queen of the Forest, pretty important for the build. Makes it run super fast. Then we'll be jumping into the flask setup. So here we've got, I prefer experimenters on most of my flasks. Uh, the exception here is the Alchemist Quicksilver. So since we are a Pathfinder, we're able to get away with the Alchemist Quicksilver because, um, look at this, our flask still lasts for, you know, four or five seconds here, five. Um, and that gives us like quite a bit of move speed. It's sort of unique to Pathfinder as well because most classes won't be able to make use, at least to be comfortable for me, if I were a raider or uh, Deadeye, for example, I wouldn't be comfortable with Alchemist because I sometimes fuck up uh, running my maps, like I'll have to backtrack a little. Also with Pathfinder, uh, you get that nice regen on your flask, like the flask charges here and there every few seconds. Um, so that's really nice, like you see it filling up there. So everywhere else, Experimenters, Quicksilver, Alchemist. And you want an Evasion Roll on your Jade. Um, you want a Warding Flask for your Stib Knight or your Diamond. These two are interchangeable, like whichever one you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you happen to roll, you know, Bleed here, uh, Bleed here, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you have a Bleed and a Warding Flask and you'll be good. Uh, Dying Sun's not really budget. Um, I paid like I think 240 for mine when I first picked it up. They're probably a little lower than now. Um, we can check real quick. Uh, 3.5x, so they're a little more expensive, I guess now. Um, but you can use like anything here for your flex slot, like an Azuri's flask for more damage and a little bit of leech. You can use uh, the Wise Oak if you want to balance out your reses a little. It's flexible. You don't have to you don't have to use Dying Sun, but it does help with the clear quite a bit. Um, I would recommend getting Dying Sun over your Helm Enchant 100% first. Definitely more important there. Alright, so let's get into the Gem Links. Now, a lot of these are flexible, especially what I have socketed in the Weapon and Shield. Um, so I'll go over the other links first. So I've got Barrage set up with Knockback and GMP, and I have a Decoy Totem here. So what you do generally, uh, you might have seen it in Clear Speed video prior to this, is um, you throw down a decoy totem and then you'll barrage and the monster will uh, get shot back and then um, it'll be taunted by your decoy totem so you can just KB it down. It's like super easy. Just takes a little bit of practice and getting used to. And this is really good because like you'll do this with a red beast um, and you'll get life back on hit from your thief's torment and it's just super synergetic. It's nice. Um, it's not required but I recommend it highly. Um, and it just fits nicely into Devotos with colors and whatnot. It's, it's just super nice. Um, then we've got Wrath here. Wrath is pretty mandatory for the damage with Pescators for damage scaling. Um, you can make up for a lot of flat damage with Abyss Jewels and whatnot, but uh, the quality also doesn't matter. This is just one that I picked up for like 10C or something. I just happen to have quality. Um, but yeah, we're not using Grace because we don't need it for our move speed. Um, our evasion's still 52k, 53k, so like we cap out on Queen of the Forest move speed anyway. There's no need for Grace in this build. Uh, normally I opt in for Grace on most builds that I do, like Windripper for example. Um, but you, ju you just don't need it. Like we have enough int on the tree to, to cap out all of our skills, right? Like it doesn't matter. So Wrath here for sure. Cast on Death Portal, so you're definitely not going to use this on Hardcore. Um, it's really meme. This is just for softcore if I happen to die to a huge spike. Um, I don't like walking back, and I didn't really see any other good options for gem link setups. Like, I'm not really sold on Lightning Golem or anything here. If I were in hardcore, I'd probably use Lightning Golem or something else in the slot. Here we've got Cast One Damage Taken, Increased Duration, Immortal Call, and Vol Haste. So pretty, pretty standard. Nice little setup. Um, you hit volleys to clear a little bit more, make use of the increased duration. Um, nothing fancy, you know. Uh, then we've got Herald of Ice, Assassin's Mark, uh, Curse on Hit, and Clarity. Here you can go with Onslaught to get a little bit more consistency on Onslaught. Right now I'm using 7% um, chance to gain Onslaught on kill, and that's up pretty much 100% of the time. 
But if you don't have that, you can definitely put Onslaught here. I'm also using uh, Watcher's Eye Prismatic Jewel for Wrath Penetration and Clarity. That's the only reason I have Clarity here. If you don't have a Watcher's Eye exactly like this, uh, don't even think about putting Clarity here. It's useless. Just put something else here to supplement your Herald Device um, and you'll be good. Onslaught's a really good one. Um, and then here we've got Portal, Faster Casting, and Flame Dash. Um, I don't know why I don't have this fused. Like I should fuse this up so that Faster Casting is also, um, you know, being affected by Flame Dash. I think it's because I was messing with Ash's Mirror. I was bouncing this between my Auto Bomber and this character and the gem colors just didn't line up at one point. Um, but definitely have all of these linked, okay? Don't be like me. Link these up, please. And then in the chess piece, we have Kinetic Blast, Added Lightning, GMP, Elemental Damage with Attacks. I like to call it Wed. We're trying to break that habit. Ice Bite and Pierce. So Ice Bite's pretty important because we don't have any other way to really generate Frenzy Charges. Raider has, you know, their way of generating but I really think Pathfinder's strong right now and super comfortable, so um, I squeezed one of these in. Level 21 doesn't matter, this is just what I had from corrupting for my auto bomber. I just switched some gems up and I happen to have one lying around. Uh, use a level 20, it's fine. The And then Pierce is just a comfortable way to clear. Um, originally I had this character as a dead eye, but I wasn't really uh, feeling it. Um, Tailwind just didn't feel that fast. Like, it's it's decent, but it was just way more comfortable being able to spam my flasks and uh, backtrack and whatnot. Um, if you don't want to go pierce, you can, uh, you know, get piercing shots here for three points. It's just the tree is already tight. Like, I'm like, what, level 93? And I haven't filled out thick skin yet. You know, what's wrong with me? I should actually spec out of these two points and go on thick skin, but that's besides the point. Um, that's what I have for, for gem setups right now for this. And it's, it's feeling pretty good. Here's maps quite fast. Now regarding the skill tree, um, I'm not going to go over this in detail too much because I'll provide a paste bin uh, down below. And also just like a like PoE URL or something that just links you straight up to a skill tree that you can click on in case you don't have path of building. Um, but mainly we path for some of the nice, I use this for uh, strength requirements, I think, or int requirements, it's probably not necessary, I could probably cut this for life. Um, definitely probably the hardcore option here is just cutting this for life. Um, but hardcore is really, like most of my builds are, are for softcore, so making adjustments to hardcore isn't always the easiest thing. Um, so here we're just picking up extra move speed. Uh, evasion for survivability and queen of the forest movement speed we've got more life weapon elemental damage crit stuff you know it's a it's a general like wander tree like it's nothing fancy um and you come up here for more life for wand stuff wand stuff alchemist for that flash duration and effect um and you know a uh, little bit of all res here a little bit of all res here i've already kind of gone over some of my jewels but we've got Onslaught here on kill. Um, we've got, I think this is just flat, yeah. Just flat wand damage. Attack speed if we've crit recently. Um, you know, just, just spend what you can on jewels. Don't stress about it. Don't worry about a Watcher's Eye. Uh, just put another budget um, Abyss Jewel here with a good flat life roll. Uh, like if you can't afford the T2, T1 rolls for wand damage, just... Just fill it out with stuff that you can, like try to get like, you know, T3, T4 rolls. Try to get flat life as high as you can, especially if you're in hardcore. And here we've got survivalist. An option here instead of like a wand jewel, something like this. Um, you can spec three points here and get acuity. And then you can put inspired learning here. That That's especially useful if you don't have the headhunter and you have Bisco's Rampage, but you want that headhunter effect. Um, the last time I checked, Inspired Learnings were like 20, 20C, 20 15, 20C. Uh, they probably went, like, they, they can fluctuate. Like, sometimes they go up to 30, sometimes they go down. Just, it's still way cheaper than a Headhunter, but that's that's where you'd put it. Because you've got your Notable here. So that's one, two, uh, three, four. Four Notables. So you've got it there. Um, this Notable might actually stretch. I'd check that. 
Um, so one, two, three, four, possibly. Uh, I'm not sure if this hits though. But anyway, it definitely hits on acuity. Um, but yeah, other than that, we just get life and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'll go over the tree more in detail um, with the link below. And then here for Pantheons, I prefer this one for movement speed and damage reduction. We don't have a lot of fizz damage reduction, so we can get chunked pretty easily. I'd probably go with a 10% chance to avoid projectiles if I were to improve this. Um, I'm just super lazy with Pantheons. You'll see in most of my videos that I never have the spec. Um, it's something I gotta work on. But yeah, definitely 10% chance to avoid projectiles there. Soul of Lunaris for Major. And then Soul of Shiraki for Chaos Damage Reduction. And just not dealing with those Dust Clouds or just taking less damage from them. We do have Devotos, so our Chaos Resistance isn't complete garbage, but it's still pretty bad. Um, so definitely uh, Soul here and then like, you know, immune to poison those poison on hit maps won't matter anymore, right? So that's super nice. And then uh, for bandits, I went with Alira, mainly because you can see with my reses here, I'm barely capped. The 15% all res is like a godsend for MF builds. Uh, you'll see that I recommend Alira on almost all of my MF builds. It's just so uh, crucial. And since we're making use of the crit multi, uh, even better, you know. Just gonna quickly go over the ascendancy as well while we're talking about the skill tree. Um, so here we're getting 10% pen, uh, which is huge because we're stacking so many different flat elements. Like I've got fire on some of my jewels. We've got lightning from ashes. We've got cold damage from ice bite. Like our damage is all over the place. It's also why we go over uh, to get forces of nature for Ellie pen. Uh, this for Ellie pen, um, primeval force. And like then we get this, which is sort of nice. We kind of went over this when we went over flasks. But the gain flee three flask charges every three seconds is nice. Uh, so sometimes you don't consume the charges. Um, this just gives us 40% damage to all of our damage, like fire, lightning, cold. It's global. Um, the 20% chance to freeze can sometimes help when we don't crit to spread Herald of Ice, uh, which gives us power charges. Um, with the Assassin's Mark setup, oh, that was Clarity. We've got Assassin's Mark somewhere here, right there. And then we've got this, which gives us 15% move speed. And what this compares most to is Raider. So Raider gets 10% move speed from uh, phasing, and then they get, um, I think it's something like 2% move speed. Um, I'll have to check that. 2% move speed from per, like per frenzy charge. And that generally won't, it'll be about the same number as 15%, right? So it's it's pretty comparable. Um, the thing that we lose is like frenzy, tar uh, frenzy charge generation single target. Uh, it's not a big deal. Like the boss that we're fighting is Mervale. So generally when we go to fight that boss, it's like we KB the walls. That room is usually packed full of monsters. We get like, you know, 50 charges for Ash's mirror and like we just spike the boss into the ground because when she teleports around, she always teleports next to a wall. So it's just like she teleports, you keep KBing and she just goes down uh, really fast. Um, so that pretty much covers it for the Ascendancy. So, so far I've had a lot of fun with the build. It's been a blast just going through underground seas and um, you know, just chaining those. Um, I've also done some burial chambers with the build. Um, no doctors on this character, just like two or three exalted orbs here and there. We had a couple false alarms, but that being said, I haven't really run a lot of um, uh, burial chambers. I was kind of burned out on them from the auto bomber and farming up for the headhunter. Uh, so I, I, this is why I kind of made this character was a uh, like a transitional character. I might turn this into Wind Ripper in a bit. Um, I like Wander, but like I, I miss Windripper, right? So we'll we'll see what happens there. But anyway, um, underground sea change of pace. That's what this is all about. And the Alk Div card, um, super good farm right now. It's a three Div card turn in for seven Alchemy orbs. And with KB, you just blast through that map. I probably run like a like one thirty, one thirty underground sea maybe, depending on the layout and if I get lost or anything. Um, so it's it's just been a lot of fun, man. and I highly recommend this to anyone who wants that sort of Wind Ripper feel but doesn't have the budget for it. This is super nice. 
Um, it's also cheaper than auto bombers, so just super, super flexible too. Um, but yeah, if you guys uh, run a wander, you have like a, you know a different opinion on ascendancy, um, you know my skill gem setups, uh, any of that stuff. If you guys have opinions on it or just comments, if you try out the build and you like it or you dislike it, um, <clears throat> you know feel free to drop a comment below. I'm interested to see what you guys um, have to say about the build. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching.